Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and my review of the Mega Constructs Halo set GGF83 Aerial Ambush. The set comes with 541 pieces and consists of a UNSC Sparrowhawk, a Covenant Banshee, and four figures. It comes with Spartan 2 in Mark IV armor, a Flame Marine, an Elite Miner, and a Grunt Miner. Weapons wise, it comes with one shotgun, one flamethrower, one plasma pistol, and a gold beam rifle. As you can see by the logo on the front of the box, this is another set that's part of the Mega Constructs 10 year anniversary line they've produced to celebrate 10 years of producing these sets on behalf of the Halo franchise. Once again, Mega have done an amazing job with the box art on this set. Seeing the Sparrowhawk being chased through the sky by the Covenant Banshee whilst the battle continues below on foot really gets the imagination going. Which for me is exactly how I want to start one of these builds. As you can see this set comes with the new style easy open box, numbered bags and two instruction manuals. As always I'll show you a few seconds of the speed build and then we'll get straight back into the review. For more speed builds you can visit my channel after this review. So what are my thoughts on this newly revised Aerial Ambush set? Good would be a good word, but a more accurate word would be brilliant. If you've seen my Warthog run review, I was full of praise for Mega for how far they've come with their sets over the 10 year period. And when it comes to this Aerial Ambush set, I can almost guarantee that you won't be disappointed. Aside from one very minor parts issue which the eagle-eyed amongst you may spot during the course of this review, the build was an absolute joy. Quality wise these sets go together so nicely now and the instructions are just effortless. And in terms of end result I'm sure you'll agree the set looks absolutely incredible. What surprises me the most about this set is that once again Mega have managed to stay true to the original design of this set from 10 years ago especially when you look at the box art from the two sets they're incredibly similar and from a glance you could be mistaken for thinking not much has changed but once you build this set a lot has changed yet they've managed to stay true to the design of both of the aircraft and the figures. To put into perspective how much different this build is compared to the original set, you can look at the parts count. This set comes with 541 pieces, whereas the original set only came with 376 pieces, and that set also included a Covenant turret. So that really shows you how much more involved the build is for both the Sparrowhawk and the Banshee on this set. And when you take into consideration that this set costs only $10 more 10 years later, it's incredibly good value for money too. Although in my opinion they've made improvements to just about every aspect of this set, for me the standout improvements are the turbo fans on the Sparrowhawk and the incredible paint job they've applied to the canopy of the Banshee. When you couple these two obvious design changes together with a whole torrent of printed pieces and a number of more subtle changes like the wingtip fins on the Sparrowhawk and the air intakes on the wings of the Banshee, you're left with two incredibly highly detailed, game accurate, very nostalgic tributes to a Halo world so many of us would like to see return. When it comes to the figures in this set, for me this is a prime example of how less can sometimes be more. The figures that come with this set are relatively average figures. You've got an Elite Miner, you've got a Grunt Miner, you've got a Flame Marine, and you've got a Spartan II in Mark IV armor. But these figures are anything but average. 
the way they've taken the four original figures and then redesigned them with the new superposable molds has worked absolutely perfectly. If you saw my Warthog Run review, you'll know that I was very impressed with the figures that came with that set. And they were great figures. You had two hunters, the Master Chief and the Arbiter. How can you beat that? If I'm perfectly honest with you, I value these four figures as much as the figures in the Warthog Run set. None more so than the Spartan II in his Mark IV armour. And the reason being is that he reminds me of what it was like to play as the Master Chief for the first time all those years ago in Combat Evolved, when the Halo universe was a much more mysterious, simpler place. If you hadn't already spotted it, this is the parts issue I mentioned earlier on in the review. As you can see, a section of the turbofan housing is missing. You can see by this comparison picture of what the piece is supposed to look like. This was the only parts problem, but you can see it's clearly a malformed part. As frustrating as it is to get faulty parts, Mega are always really good at sending replacement parts. And if you've never tried it, it's really easy. So do follow up if you get any faulty parts. On the plus side, I did get all of these extra bonus parts for free. And as you can see, again, there's some really good, interesting pieces in there. So I'm certainly not going to complain about one faulty part when I get about 30 or 40 extra free parts. To sum up this set and finalize the review, I'd have to say for me personally, this set is a 10 out of 10, much like the Warthog Run set. I really like what Mega have done with these two anniversary sets that I've reviewed, and I really hope that they continue along this line, recreating some of the other great sets from the past, like the Covenant Phantom and the UNSC Falcon, as well as continue to bring us new builds that we've yet to see. One thing I should mention about this set is the clear plastic stand that the Sparrowhawk is on at the moment does not come with this set. The stand the Banshee is on does come with the set. So it's worth bearing that in mind when you're considering whether to get this set or not. I hope you've enjoyed the review. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.